Council Member Pine. You know, I've, all the years that I've been in public office, I don't think I've ever been sad about something that we do. And these measures, this all the sit lie bills, it just makes me sad. It's as if a moment in time we are suddenly changed from what our ancestors taught us about aloha and compassion. You want to talk about your community changing? Talk to all the Native Hawaiians in my district. They really feel like their community has changed when we all came here. They didn't pass a law prohibit you from coming. And I feel that we have forgotten for those of us who have ancestors who lived in poverty on the plantation, as if we forgot the messages when you folks started the Democrat Party many years ago about the only way that we lift all of us up is if we lift ourselves up together. And so this moment makes me sad because I feel that we have forgotten all of that, that we have been taught about what makes Hawaii so special. And the saddest thing is it started off in the place that we promote aloha the most so that people come here. It's a facade now. It's pretend aloha. As a, pol- as a policymaker, when I make decisions, certainly you get overcome by emotion, but the number one thing I ask myself all the time, does this solve the problem that we are trying to fix? These sit lie bills do not solve the problem of homelessness. It moves the problem of homelessness to a, from a rich community to a poor community, and that is no way to solve a problem. So, Councilmember Harmoto talked about how did we get here? How did it get so bad? Well, when my grandparents were very poor, we were building 10,000 homes, affordable homes a year on a walk alone. So they could afford the American dream. And we're now to a few hundred. We wonder why do we have a 10% increase in local families becoming homeless? Local families. We're not talking about what's going on in Waikiki. We're talking about families with kids. It is tough out there. We can solve homelessness, and we've seen all the testimony. We build more affordable housing. We fund mental health care. We fund more of our homeless outreach community. We get more people out there to bring them in. As someone who used to work in a homeless shelter, I can tell you that there's not enough money. There's like maybe 5% of what they really need. That is how you get people off of sitting and lying on the street. Because I can tell you, the people who are sitting and lying on the street, they don't even know what they're doing half the time. They have lost themselves many years ago. Either through divorce, they've been conned of everything, they, they experienced the death that they may have caused by accidentally, they've lost their soul. So by arresting them, you think that's going to help them? They'll just be lost in jail and then come back to the same place because that's the place that they are comfortable with. And in terms of just looking at the policy, these are my problems in opposition to all the sit lie bills. There are vague exceptions to the enforcement, and I try to get those answers today. May, could, we'd give a warning, but the reality is what we wrote in these bills is that you'll get cited, basically arrested, you'll have a, a criminal record. And it says that there are some exceptions. So it says, you can sit or lie on the sidewalk if it's a medical emergency. But that's not defined. So from a policy perspective, so if you have a, that most troublesome guy in Waikiki that we are talking about, that's really just a few people, he can say, I'm having a medical emergency. And you can't force, by law, anyone to take medical help. Because then you have another constitutional problem. 
we make an exception for expressive activity. So that same problem guy that we're trying to get rid of says, I'm expressing and having expressive activity. We do not define it. And there's no exception for the enforcement when it comes to children. How can we do that? So law enforcement, as much as they work so hard, they have to be the, boy, the guys, and the ladies that decide what expressive activity is, a medical emergency, it places all the burden on the police, who can then be accused of selective enforcement. What if you have a tourist on one corner and you have a homeless person on another and they only arrest the homeless person? You have constitutional problems there. And as someone who has worked with a homeless shelter, as you read these bills, you can see that the bills do not contain any provision to actually connect homeless people with services, not even written in any of the the legislation before us. In fact, the ordinance itself makes no mentions of any services at all. For example, there's no requirement that service referrals be made prior to issuing citations. And the city has yet to secure a lease and the right of entry proposed for Sand Island. It just feels like we're not even ready for what we're about to pass. And in relation to Bill 42, since we're talking about that, there are serious constitutional problems with this. While it has been modeled out of Seattle, Seattle didn't have a 24-hour ban. And so it has not been tested to pass constitutional muster. And so for their, those reasons, I'm against Bill 42 as well as the other city bills. Thank you. Any further discussion, members? Bill 42.